In our final video in this series focusing on how to represent pitches in the musical staff, we're going to introduce a very critical idea that is necessary for understanding more complex ideas in music theory, such as how to construct scales, musical intervals, and eventually how harmony works. Now to do this, we need to revisit the organization of the piano keyboard because visualizing this concept is a lot easier if we look at it on the piano. Now the first thing that we need to do is identify the location of C on the piano keyboard. And again, it doesn't matter which C that we pick, as long as you find one C by identifying a cluster of two black keys to the right and three black keys to the left. Next, we're going to go up to the next white key, D, and again, it doesn't matter which C we look at on the piano keyboard, the result of this experiment remains the same. Now, the question we want to ask is, is there another note or another pitch in between C and D? And this is why we use the piano keyboard because it's very, very obvious that there is clearly a black key in between C and D. So if we go up from C, we would call this black key C sharp. And if we go down from D, this black key would be known as D flat. And again, it doesn't matter which C we look at, the result remains the same. So in the case of this part of our thought experiment, yes, there is clearly a pitch in between C and D. We can call this C sharp or we can call this D flat. Now the second part of our experiment, we're going to make the same comparison, but using B and C instead, because we'll see something interesting here. When we go from B to C, we can see that there is no black key in between B and C. There is no note or pitch in between these two notes here. And we can see this between two other white keys if we locate E and F. And again, it doesn't matter where on the piano you locate E and F, the result remains the same. When you go from E to F, there is no black key in between the two pitches, regardless of where on the piano keyboard we are looking. Now, what we have just illustrated here is the distinction between two measures of distance that are possible between adjacent notes on the piano. Uh, this is actually an introduction to a musical concept called intervals that will be revisited in a much later video. Now, there are two names that we can learn to describe the distances between pitches like C and D, where there is a pitch in between two other pitches. For example, C sharp or D flat between C and D. The distance between C and D is what we call a whole tone, although musicians often note, simply notate this as WW for whole. Now, the distance between E and F or between B and C is different because there is no pitch in between uh, E and F or B and C respectively, meaning that the distance between B and C or E and F is only half the distance between C and D because, again, there is no intermediate pitch. And because it is half the distance of a whole tone, we would simply call this a semitone, which musicians often notate in shorthand as S. So, for example, if we wanted to locate two other whole tones and semitones, or rather one of each, if we take a look between F and G and ask, is there another pitch in between F and G? Well, obviously, there is this black key in the middle here, which we can call F sharp or G flat, and therefore the distance between F and G we would call a whole tone. Well, what if we actually wanted to find the distance between a black key and a white key? So if we were to take G sharp or a flat here and find the distance between this and a natural, for example, well, if we go from this black key to A, is there another key in between G sharp or A flat and A? Well, obviously not because they're literally right next to each other. And therefore the distance between G sharp and A would be a 
semitone. So again, it's a relatively simple idea to visualize, especially on the piano, uh, but the piano is necessary to show that certain pairs of white keys or natural pitches do not actually have a black key in between them, which makes it a useful tool to determine whether we are looking at a whole tone or a semitone. As quick practice for this concept, before you move on to the next series of videos, take a look at the groups of pitches that are listed in the table below and see if you can use your knowledge of the piano keyboard and the position of each pitch on the piano keyboard to identify whether these are whole tones or semitones before trying the practice problems below.